And welcome back to Spotlight. Joining me now is a very familiar face, Dr. Dave Dulio, professor at Oakland University and director of their Center for Civic Engagement. Uh, professor, good seeing you again. You're doing okay? I'm doing well, Chuck. Thanks for having me. All right. I would be remiss if I didn't say since the last time uh, I had a chance to interview you, you have now been elevated at Oakland University to distinguished professor, along with two of your other colleagues. So uh, kudos to that and well-deserved. Thank you very much. All right. Um, you've been around politics a long time here in Michigan, also in Washington. Have you ever seen a political climate like the one we're in? Never. It is, uh, there's so many things about it that make it unique. Uh, you know, the it's historic. Uh, the things that are going on now are, are um, I mean, it's a circus, right? I mean, it's, uh, it, there's so much swirl, right? I also think that, that there's um, an unfortunate nature to it as well, because I think the, uh, the Trump indictment, uh, other things that are happening in American politics, debates about policy, uh, we're just diving deeper into a, an era of polarization and division. And I think that that's, uh, that's going to be tough for the country. Sure. Well, certainly, uh, as you said, partisanship is, is alive and well in America, and democracy is also on the line, and it's being tested perhaps like never before. Um, the Trump indictment, let's drill down to Michigan. Do you expect that to have any kind of political implications here in Michigan? Does it change the way the Michigan GOP operates, uh, uh, potential for what's going to happen in the next presidential race? I know a lot of it, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but just the indictment alone, the first uh, former president to be indicted criminally, uh, does that change the landscape? I think that it does, but I'm not sure that there's anything unique about Michigan uh, that would be different than the rest of the country. I think you're going to see some of the same dynamics that are uh, playing out across the country be present here in Michigan. And I think it'll, it'll I'd want to see some polling numbers, maybe from from our friend Bernie Porn at Epic MRA to see what the, the, the electorate in Michigan feels about the indictment. And, and the state of the GOP race for um, the, the presidential nomination in 2024. But I would note that uh, uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was in Michigan last week and, and made a speech in, in Midland and uh, uh, the, the, the topic came up. So this is going to be present in all of politics, I think, um, uh, for the foreseeable future. Professor Dulio, how high of a bar does Michigan's controversial GOP chair, Christina Caramo, have to reach in order to unite the Michigan GOP party? An extremely high bar. I think that this is going to be one of the most interesting and important developments to watch through 2023 leading into 2024, an incredibly important election cycle. I think the, the reaction to the new leadership atop the Michigan Republican Party is going about as predicted. I think that they're, uh, they're breaking some eggs and trying to make an omelet. I think that they're, uh, they're going to do some things a little differently. It's clear in, in, in terms of uh, just one example, not using the Lansing office um, for the party headquarters. I think there's a lot of predictions about difficulties raising money, I think those are going to come to fruition. And, and as you know, Chuck, right, without money, it's it, it's hard to have an impact in, in politics these days. And, and how other Republicans, how other conservatives navigate that changing Michigan Republican Party dynamic, I think is going to be something to watch. Professor Dulio, Governor Gretchen Whitmer now rides herd over the Michigan Democratic trifecta, the first one in the state in 40 years. She recently repealed the controversial right to work law in this state and just a few days ago repealed the ban on abortion that has been in the Constitution since 1931 in this state. This is a long overdue step and it proves that 
When we keep fighting to protect everyone's ability to make their own decisions about their bodies, we can win. Elections have consequences, right? They certainly do. And, and I think that this is such a great example of uh, the, the counter argument to what, frankly, a lot of Americans think about politics is that, you know, it doesn't matter that well, it really doesn't matter if a Democrat or Republican wins. But boy, it does. You know, and, and we've, we're seeing that right now with even in, in very closely divided uh, Michigan House, Michigan Senate, Democrats are uh, delivering on campaign promises. They're delivering on uh, uh, goals that they have set for themselves for, for decades. And, uh, you know, the, it, it's hard to argue that it, it doesn't matter if one candidate wins over the other. It, we're seeing clear evidence that it certainly does. Sure. Um, very quickly, in a little bit of time we have left, uh, we certainly see the Michigan Senate race. Uh, uh, Stabano is still in Washington, but you got a lot of folks running for her re to her seat in which she says she's going to retire. Um, so that's starting to take shape uh, across the boundary lines there over in Wisconsin. We just saw a historic Supreme Court election. Normally, Supreme Court elections don't get a lot of media attention. This one uh, got attention from coast to coast because of its implications. Our state is taking a step forward to a better and brighter future where our rights and freedoms will be protected. Uh, look ahead a little bit to the next presidential race. You know, there are uh, a, only a handful of states in our system that, that relies on the Electoral College to decide who wins the presidency. And there's only a handful of states that really matter. And Michigan is one of those. I think, it. you know, let's see how things play out in the next uh, 12 or 14 months. But, uh, you know, it, it's hard to bet against those three states being absolutely critical to the outcome. All right, I'm going to take you uh, the, the, the out of America for just a second. Finland joining NATO. Uh, even on the world front, we see changing dynamics. Absolutely, and it's uh, it's 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 one of those things that is uh, going to change, I think, or at least impact the uh, geopolitical uh, strategies and and thinking about how. Um, different countries relate to each other. Right? Hard to imagine that this is not related to what's happening in Ukraine, and uh, you know that is just continuing to have reverberations throughout the world. All right, that's all we have time for. Uh, you're out of time, so I'm not going to make you make a prediction on whether or not the Tigers win the pennant this year. How about that? <laughs> I appreciate that, Chuck. Don't want to don't want to go on record on that one. <laughs> Professor Dave Dulio, thanks so much for joining us today on Spotlight. Uh, happy Easter, and uh, uh, we'll get you back. Same to you, Chuck. Thanks. Thank you.